so we've gotten this uh, LED to light. Now I want to close this terminal and put some code on it. Now I've already written this file, ESP Blink, which is actually an example file, to the device. And then all I believe I need to do is do ESP file execute ESP blink dot lua and hopefully ah now it's actually on the wrong pin so let's save that and we will do a write of that file and execute the file again and we have our blinking LED demo. Excellent. So we've now got the ESP8266 powered. We've got it doing a blinking LED demo. We've gotten it to do a hello world and we've gotten the way we can write our own code on the ESP8266. There are only two GPIO pins on this device. Uh, I can always add more maybe using RX and TX and adding in a microcontroller to that as well. Maybe we can see if we can use Wi-Fi to turn on an LED through a battery powered version of this. What I might find a way of doing is perhaps breadboarding this straight in, otherwise I am going to end up losing and mixing up these connections. So we'll do that today as a matter of freeing it from its tethers temporarily. We've got this point to point wired and what I'm thinking I want to do is just drop this module somewhere onto the breadboard. Let's take away this additional jumper because I was just using that earlier, if you remember, to test the TX and RX in my previous video. Let's start wiring a position over here. We'll mark our place with the ground and the RX pins. So, let's see, and we'll try and use the shortest cables to keep it nice and tidy. Okay, so we're going to wire it so maybe we can go up this way. Now the one other problem here, if I wire it like that, is that there's the USB port. So maybe what I actually need, instead of just jump wires, is a set of male to female leads that I can plug straight in from there across to there. Uh, I definitely have a set of those. Let me just find it in my robot cupboard. Okay, here's a set of male to female jump cables. We'll just peel off six of the things. Okay, now they're not going to be particularly colour coded. Um, I mean, I could try and start it so that the ground is on the black cable, which would be convention. Ah, now if I peel from here, I can do that. And five volts is going to be grey. Okay, so take six of those off. And I'm going to connect all six, including the not connected, just to make it easy so there's no real confusion. There we are. We'll drop these in here. That means we can make connections either side of this set. There we are. Okay. Right, so what do we need? First we want to bring ground up. I'm going to want an even shorter jump cable, I think. Uh, those are too short. Those are about right. There we are. Then we've got our positive rail connection. Now that's actually driving power input when it's uh, coming off of the computer. So I'm actually going to want to jump over with the jumper wire there. Let's use one of these. I think the yellow ones are too much. So that's going from here. And it's two pins across from ground. So that's going to be this pin here. Then the next one is the TX, which is the orange, so this one here, we want perhaps one of these will do it. And we will then disconnect that pin, bring it up here so it doesn't interfere with that LED assembly too much. Now that's frustrating that we've got to have that, that means that they actually the connect and the jumper in here isn't quite right. So I've found with uh, without that, if I multimeter test it, it doesn't work. Let's just prove that to myself to make sure I'm not leaving an unnecessary cable in. Again, in a good breadboard, that should work, but this breadboard has, was a little bit prone to be a bit flaky. Maybe I should just use a better breadboard. Okay, let's put the multimeter into 
discontinuity and there we are. Okay, so if I take out that, let's just make sure. Ah, well, that was unnecessary, wasn't it? Okay, good. So we can now drop this in over here. And okay, I know it's crossing, but it's not too untidy. That's much tidier than it was. Okay, right. So the next connection is the RX. So we'll just get rid of this because that's now untidy. There's a slight bend in that. There has to be really, but that's still pretty tidy. Okay, taking that away. Good. Okay, so that's actually all of the connections made. Take that out of there. In here, and now we're much less point to point, much more tidy. I think and that now means I can predictably just pop the whole. Well, I can pop the whole assembly off here, but it would be nice to pop it off over here. So we could do that as long as we keep them aligned. Then we put them in there. So one thing we can do to try and keep this together is use a dab of sticky tack, so a bit of sticky tack, tack and I'll just form it around here just to keep this in line. Yes it's a bodge but this is all a bodge at this point um, so there's nothing soldered here this is just thrown together but it's thrown together with some convenience in mind and there we are that's a bit easier to connect and disconnect the computer so when we untether it I wouldn't mind finding a way to make that assembly a bit shorter if I could reconnect this part to something. Well that might be a solder job for another video so let's let's not get into that now. Okay right so that's now ready to be adapted and one last thing we'll do. Now I'm not sure how good these batteries are now because they've been sat around in my cupboard for a while but if I disconnect this and we've left the init script to be the flashing of the LED. Just put that in and put this in and the LED is flashing. Excellent. So we can now power it battery powered. 